Hello students, today I am going to discuss the morphology of bacteria 2. So let's study about the capsule. The so capsule is a well defined condensed gel like structure outside the envelope which can be demonstrated by light microscope. So sometimes it can be a very tiny structure which can only be detected by electron microscopy or by serological techniques it's called as micro capsule if the capsule is very loose it's called as the slime layer of the bacteria so the various bacteria produces a different types of the capsule and also uh, in the table I have shown the chemical composition example is Bacillus anthracis produces the polypeptide capsule which is made up of the D glutamic acid. Okay. So likewise we have various different type of organisms producing different types of the capsule which is chemically different in its composition. So demonstration of capsule is a, a three mass question in various university examination. Here there are so many techniques of demonstration of the capsule. There are some staining techniques like Welsh method or McFadden's capsular staining technique. So the Welsh method is a treatment of a fixed smear with a hot crystal violet following it uh, rinsing by the copper sulphate. So the cells and the background appear dark blue where the capsule of the bacteria will be pale blue so that we can clearly differentiate the background from the capsule and the McFadden's capsular staining is nothing but it's a polychrome methylene blue staining used for the bacillus anthrax so there is a negative staining technique either with india ink or nigrosin so here what we are going to do is we are going to mix a bacterial suspension with the india ink or nigrosin and we are going to observe it under the uh, the low power and high power uh, objectives of the light microscope we can see the, the capsule as a clear zone around the cell as well as in the background so it looks like a starry sky appearance so there are the other methods of demonstration of capsule so this is an indirect method of demonstration here and also some of these methods are very specific okay so the one such method is a uh, quellung's reaction which is most of the times asked as a three mass question itself okay so capsule is an antigenic capsule is antigenic and uh, so the antibodies will be produced against the capsule which we call it as anti capsular serum okay so when we mix a suspension of back capsulated bacteria with its corresponding anti capsular serum and we add a dye like methylene blue the capsule becomes very prominent that means it it is going to swell and it takes up the stain and it is it becomes more prominent so it's also called it's that's why it's, also, it's called as quellung's reaction and sometimes it's also called as the swelling's reaction okay so the next cellular appendage which we deal is will be the flagella so flagella is a, a thread like appendage which is intricately embedded in the cell envelope and the cell membrane okay so this structure it confers motility to the bacteria okay so based on the the position of the flagella the we can classify the flagella into various different types okay say for example if the flagella is in one single pole it's called as monotrichus example is vibrio cholera so it is called if it is present uh, in multiple numbers on the poles okay say for example this is the say this is more than uh, one flagella on one pole it is called as the lophotrichus okay if it is present on all the sides of the bacteria it is called as the peritrichus flagella okay and if it is present on 
either side one uh, this is monotrichous flagella that is two flagella on either poles of the bacteria it's called as amphitrichous flagella and if there is a tuft of flagellas on the both the poles of the bacteria it is called as amphilophotrichous uh, flagella so there is one more type of flagella what we call it as endoflagella this is a flagellum like structure that lie between the cell surface and the that is nothing but the cell membrane and the outer membrane so it lies between the that is what we call it as periplasmic space okay so it connects from one end to the another uh, end of the cell and uh, the it also confers the motility to the bacteria so example for the bacteria with endoflagella is uh, the triponema pallidum we can give okay so the flagella is made up of the the subunit protein subunits called as flagellins which are arranged in a helical form uh, around a central core so it's a hollow structure with a helical heli helically arranged flagell flagellin proteins okay so the flagella will attach to the cell by uh, a complex structures like basal body hook and filament so you can see this is the the basal body this is the hook and this is the filament rest of the portion okay so we will take up one by one and also the structure of the flagella will differ between gram positive and gram negative which i am going to explain in the next slide we'll see uh, what is the composition of this uh, basal body so basal body is having one pair of rings in gram positive bacteria two pairs of rings in gram negative bacteria so you can see there are two pairs of rings in gram negative bacteria and one pair of ring in gram positive bacteria so this basal body is the place where the proton motive forces will give a rotatory movement to the entire flagella it acts as a motor for the flagella the next structure is a hook okay hook is nothing but a short curved structure which extends from the basal body okay it simply connects the basal body from the the filament okay so the it 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 uh, it it's no it's going to uh, act as a propeller okay so it just uh, translates the rotatory forces from the basal body uh, to the uh, the the filamental portion of the flagellum so while explaining i told there are two pairs of rings in case of gram negative and one pairs in gram positive so if we have two pairs because uh, in gram negative because one pair will get submerged in the cell membrane layer and one pair in the the outer membrane layer of the gram negative bacteria which is also a, a li li lipoprotein okay whereas in case of gram positive bacteria they have only one pair which will be submerged in the the plasma membrane or cytoplasmic membrane okay so functions of the pla flagella is primarily this is responsible for motility which is nothing but the chemotaxis it is uh, the method of uh, mm, mobilizing the bacteria towards the site of the the nutrition okay so it also plays a role in the bacterial survival and pathogenesis because it is antigenic it Uh, can induce the production of antibodies and uh, the generally the most commonly used term for the flagellar antigen is h antigen okay so anti flagellar antibodies usually they are not protective but they will help in the serologic zero diagnosis of few of the conditions like the typhoid and others okay so there are uh, various techniques of demonstration of flagella this is uh, most commonly asked viva question uh, in practicals as well as this can be asked as a three mass question in your 
uh, theory examination so there are s direct and indirect methods of demonstration of the flagella the direct method of demonstration of flagella is by electron microscopy so direct staining techniques like uh, rayu staining uh, hugh glifson staining all those things okay so indirect methods of demonstration is nothing but we are going to demonstrate the motility and thereby we are going to declare that the presence of the flagella okay say for example dark room microscopy hanging drop so observing the spreading growth on uh, semi solid media okay craig's tube method u tube method or using a special dyes like tetrazoleum dye incorporated into the semi solid medium where the motility of the bacteria can be noted down so let's take up the next cellular uh, the cell wall appendage that is pili it's also known as fimbria the pili are short straight hair like filamentous extension from the cell surface usually they are the they are present in the gram negative bacteria so they are also composed of the the pilin subunits which is nothing but a proteinaceous uh, material okay so this is responsible for the attachment of the bacteria to the host cells so many pili proteins they uh, help in the attachment of these bacteria to the uh, various uh, organs of the body e example is a p pili of escherichia coli which binds to the the specifically to the uroepithelium okay so they are also antigenic in nature and uh, some of the pi uh, pili they can agglutinate the rbcs of the guinea pig and uh, they will be specifically inhibited by mannose that means to say that they are called as mannose sensitive and mannose resistant because a uh, mannose sensitive means when we add mannose mannose will go and bind to the pili thereby inhibiting the agglutination of rbcs so that is what is called as mannose sensitive and mannose resistant means it uh, when we add mannose also so mannose will not go and bind to the pili and thereby the agglutination will not be inhibited that is what is mannose resistant okay so example for this uh, we are going to classify them as type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 based on the the various uh, properties say mannose sensitive is type 1 which which is seen in a case of e coli klebsiella shigella and salmonella species type 2 usually it is devoid of uh, agglutination or the adhesive property example is uh, uh, the such the type 2 pile is found in the salmonella gallinarum and pulorum so type 3 is mannose resistant and it agglutinates the rbcs only after uh, heating so so you are going to take out some of the coatings of the outside coatings thereby exposing the pila to make it uh, uh, agglutinate the rbcs the uh, example is that present in case of klebsiella and serratia species type 4 is mannose re mannose resistant and it occurs in proteus species so there is a specialized pili which is called as sex pili which helps in the attachment of the the donor bacteria to the recipient bacteria during the bacterial conjugation okay so and uh, demonstration of the pili can be done by electron microscopy or by the agglutination method whatever i told the hemagglutination technique to demonstrate the presence of pili so now we will take up one of the important topic of the morphology of bacteria that is the bacterial spore so in future i will be uploading the videos uh, with respect to the flagella pile and bacterial spores separately because if they ask for a short note then we need to explain little bit more than what i have explained in this uh, particular session so let's come to the bacterial spore Bacterial spores are the highly resistant resting phase of some of the bacteria produced after a long period of starvation or in the other adverse conditions. Let's see the morphology of the spore. The so spore is having uh, four important parts that is one is the core, okay, the cortex, the outer membrane and the spore coat that is the proteinaceous coat which is outside the the entire spore so the core is nothing but the complete nucleus and it has the components of the protein synthesizing apparatus that means the ribosomes they transfer rna 
all those things which is required for protein synthesis when it germinates and also it has the the energy generating system also and it contains a large amount of the calcium dipycolonate the spore wall will be the innermost layer so uh, this is the the spore wall okay so the spore wall is the innermost layer here okay the it it contains the normal uh, peptidoglycans uh, the the maximum dehydration of the peptidoglycans will be done and it's a very thick layer cortex is the thickest layer of the spore and um, uh, uh, it contains uh, the unusual peptidoglycans okay so the cortex uh, will be a uh, uh, thick structure of the the peptidoglycan itself and some like a, uh, a kind of modified uh, peptidoglycans okay and the pro uh, the protein coat that is the spore coat is nothing but a keratin like protein which contains many uh, intramolecular disulfide bonds and uh, it gives resistant to the actually by the bacterial uh, the antibacterial chemical agents and also the environmental insults in which the spores undergoes uh, during its um, unfavorable conditions okay so depending upon the position of the spores and also the shape of the spores and uh, relative size of this spore we are going to classify it as central subterminal terminal oval or spherical or it can be bulging or non bulging see all these things we need to know uh, because of the uh, to uh, presumptively identify the the uh, the bacteria okay say for example we need to know whether the the spore is oval or spherical whether it's bulging or non bulging okay whether it and what position it is there say for example this is a uh, oval and central non bulging spherical central non bulging oval subterminal non bulging okay so this is oval subterminal bulging spore okay so oval ter terminal bulging oval spherical terminal bulging okay and also sometimes uh, spore can be free also so one important aspect of the spore is we need to know about the sporulation process see the sporulation usually begins in an unfavorable environment so it can be in the presence of a, a deprivation of the water deprivation of the nutrition or in a uh, a place like uh, in the soil or in the air so where the the nutrients are deprived in such situation the spo the vegetative form starts converting itself into the the spore form there are various uh, steps in the formation of the spores the first and foremost thing is the vegetative bacteria the mother cell when it is exposed to an un unfavorable environment it's going to split its uh, dna and uh, segregate it in the uh, two parts of the cell say in this example the the dna gets replicated and it is placed in the poles of the bacteria and uh, this dna is going to align itself into the axis of the bacteria and then the cytoplasmic membrane starts invaginating to form what is called as the four spore okay so the the four spore will be engulfed by the the mother cell the mother cell starts moving and engulfing the four spore okay uh, to uh, to form a second membrane over the the spore okay then the spore starts accumulating the calcium and dipycolonic acids uh, between the membranes and uh, the spore coat uh, forms around the endospore and then the maturation of the endospores will occur that is nothing but the completion of the spore coat and increasing the resistance to heat and chemicals okay then the mother cell will rupture and release the spore into the 
environment so that can this is one way or the mother can mother cell can retain it and as we told the different forms of the spores in the previous slides so this is again uh, different stages usually it is explained in four stages okay uh, i mean sorry uh, seven stages okay so stage one here the the first the dna is split okay so it is uh, put in into the one axis and uh, the sp uh, the four spore will form then the spore will be engulfed by the mother cell and then the accumulation of the dipycolonic acid and the calcium and later on thickening of this uh, again the peptidoglycan layer and then forming the the spore co cortex and the release of the spore so conversion of the spore into vegetative form uh, it occurs under the suitable condition and this process is called as the germination so the germination process uh, goes with the activation init initiation and then the outgrowth of the bacteria so demonstration of the spore is important so so we are going to use some straining techniques to demonstrate the spore say for example we can use the malachite green technique or carbol fusion method so carbol fusion method is nothing but uh, we use a technique of uh, modified zedenstein that is zeal nissenstein where we use 0.5% uh, uh, sulfuric acid to decolorize and we can see the spore stained pink in uh, color so the property of the spores is it resists the usually the ordinary boiling disinfectants and also heating so that is why what we do is uh, we exploit this uh, property of the spore and uh, we use it as a biological indicator for the uh, sterilization process generally they get destroyed by autoclaving at 120 degrees celsius for 15 minutes so that is why we use the spores for the purpose of the uh, as a uh, biological indicator for the spore uh, sterilization uh, the ensuring the the proper sterilization process okay so that is going to finish the morphology of bacteria class 2 so uh, i'll be uploading uh, in future this uh, flagella pile and uh, spores in detail so please like this video and subscribe to my channel thank you